I want to introduce a new tool to the toolbox. I want us to be able to figure out the formal charge of atoms in a molecule. What formal charge does is it tells you the distribution of valence electrons in covalently bonded atoms. Another way to think about it is it tells you kind of the relative charge of an atom in a molecule. Is an atom more positive or more negative? Before we go further, you might be thinking that we already did that in chapter 4 when we assigned oxidation states. And formal charge is similar. We are looking at relative charge, but it does it differently. When we dealt with oxidation states, we kind of considered everything to be ionic. The more electronegative element took the electrons, the more electropositive elements gave the electrons, and there really wasn't any sharing of electrons. Formal charge treats all the bonds as being purely covalent. That when there's a bonded pair of electrons, each atom takes one electron from the pair and they share evenly. Neither formal charge nor oxidation states actually tell the whole story, but they are tools used to solve specific problems. Oxidation states help us figure out the transfer of electrons in a redox reaction. And formal charge is really helpful when we look at Lewis structures, particularly resonance structures, and if we want to figure out if resonance structures are equivalent or non-equivalent. So here are the rules. When you're assigning formal charge, you want to get as close to zero as possible. The less formal charge you have, the better. If you end up with a negative formal charge on an atom, it should be on the atom that's more electronegative. In the book, they give you a chart on how to assign formal charges, but it comes out to be pretty simple. You take the number of valence electrons that the atom started with, and you subtract from it the number of valence electrons that the atom has in your Lewis structure. If your valence electrons are unbonded, if they're lone pair, then we count them. If there's a bond attached to the atom, then we just take one electron from the bond. We assume that the bonded electrons are being split evenly between the two elements in the bond. Let me show you a couple examples and hopefully that will clear it up. Let's take a look at the Lewis structures that we've already drawn. The Lewis structures for the carbonate ion and the Lewis structures for carbon dioxide. Let's start with the carbon atom in the middle. Carbon normally has four valence electrons. And then if you look at the carbonate ion, you can see there's one bond, two bonds, and then a double bond. We assume in formal charge that a bonded atom takes one electron from each bond. So that's going to be one electron from the single bond, another electron from the single bond, and two electrons from the double bond. So to find the formal charge, I'm going to take the number of valence electrons that it started with and subtract from it the number of valence electrons that the bonded atom has. So carbon starts with four, and there are four electrons around the carbon here. So if I subtract those, carbon has a formal charge of zero. It's neutral. Let's do the same exercise with the double bonded oxygen. Oxygen normally starts with six valence electrons. And then if you look at the double bonded oxygen, well, there's one, two, three, four electrons that are unbonded, two bonded electrons, one from each part of the double bond. So for this oxygen, if I do six minus six, well, this oxygen also has a formal charge of zero. And that's good. The closer you are to zero, the better your formal charge is. Now let's look at the single bonded oxygen. Neutral oxygen has six valence electrons. And then if I look at this oxygen, well, there are two, four, six electrons that are unbonded. And then a bond, so if we take one electron from that bond, that's seven electrons around that oxygen. So if I do six minus seven, that gives that oxygen a formal charge of negative one. And I have another single bonded oxygen with the exact same arrangement, so this oxygen has a formal charge of negative one. So I've got a carbon with a formal charge of zero, an oxygen with a formal charge of zero, and two oxygens with formal charges of negative one. Now it makes sense that I have two oxygens with formal charges of negative one, because the total charge of my ion is negative two. So your formal charge should add up to the charge of the molecule or the ion. As we look at the different resonance structures, we can see the same thing. The carbons always have a formal charge of zero. The single bonded oxygen have formal charges of negative one. And the double bonded oxygen has a formal charge of zero. And so as you look at the three resonance structures, there is no one Lewis structure that is more stable than the others. They all have the exact same amount of formal charge. As we look at the carbon dioxide, however, we see a different story. Again, the carbon, well, carbon by itself has four valence electrons. I see four bonds. If I take one electron from each bond, that means that carbon, again, has a formal charge of zero. 
and we see this double bonded oxygen. And as we saw with the carbonate, oxygen starts with six. I have two, four unbonded electrons, and then one from each in the double bond. Just like the carbonate, this double bonded oxygen is zero, and this double bonded oxygen would also be zero. So I've got zeros across the board in carbon dioxide. That's perfect. The less formal charge you have, the better. If I look at the other resonance structures, well, this carbon has four bonds around it and four valence electrons to start, so that's zero. We've seen that the single bonded oxygen forms a negative one, because it would have six electrons to start with, then two, four, six unbonded electrons, and then one bonded electron. So this single bonded oxygen is negative one. And then this oxygen, well, it starts out with six, it has an unbonded pair of electrons, and then three electrons from this triple bond. So that's five, so that gives it a positive one. We have an oxygen with a positive one, an oxygen with a negative one, and carbon that's zero. That's much worse than the carbon with the double bonds. We have zeros across the board with carbons with a double bond. I've got oxygen with a positive one charge. Now oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so if anything should have a negative charge, it should be the oxygen, and the carbon should have the positive charge. And then I have another oxygen over here with a negative charge. So we can see that this is significantly less stable than the carbon with the double bonds. And then you have the same arrangement, just in reverse, with the other resonant structure. You have the negative one here, the neutral carbon in the middle, and the positive one here. And so you can see that these Lewis structures are not equivalent. I've got a really stable one with the two double bonds, but the triple bond arrangement is not as stable.